Welcome everyone to the reInvent Relevance podcast, where we dive headfirst into what it takes to move your career from where it is to where you want it to be. This means reinventing your relevance, learning how to embrace both change and the call to do work worth doing. Here we share stories of those who have made the choice to follow their strengths so that we can learn something from their journey. Now, joining me today is an old friend of mine, Darius Darling. Darius uh, is from Detroit and he doesn't live in the city right now, uh, but he's an HR generalist, generalist, excuse me, with Brotherhood Mutual Insurance. Uh, he's got an MBA from Indiana Tech. He's He's also a music minister. You know, he balances a full-time career with a full-time job in his calling. So I wanted to bring him on the show today to talk about what it takes to braid those two aspects of your lives together. Darius, my friend, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I am truly honored to be with you and the the and the podcast today. I'm I'm excited to be on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> it's always our pleasure to have good people on. So let's let's just kick this thing off. Uh, tell us tell us more about what you're doing and how you got there. Uh, so right now I am a HR generalist, as you mentioned, at Brotherhood Mutual. Uh, my primary responsibility is recruiting. So mm -hmm. I work with our hiring managers to identify needs on their teams for open positions that they may have, and then try to find the right people to fit into those um, those positions. So mm -hmm. I'm really hands on with our hiring managers, really hands on with the candidates that we that we get and we we seek out different candidates, but we also get candidates who, who come in and who want to apply for these positions. Uh, but we just do the best that we can to hire um, the best people for the fit of our team. And, and what's interesting about Brotherhood Mutual is we are a, a church or a, a mutual insurance company for churches and related ministries. So a lot of those nuances began to meld together. So you talked about my ministry experience, kind of what I'm doing now. I, I use a lot of my ministry experience in the job that I'm doing now when it relates to working with people and, and teaching and training and developing and, and really looking at what is that next phase of the team or next phase even of the ministry. Exactly. When, when, you help, when I counsel uh, and, and coach people that are trying to find new careers, I often ask them, you know, what's adjacent to what you're doing? What, what, and where is their overlap? I mean, in, in this case, it was perfect. I mean, Brotherhood Mutual's got a, a long history of being associated with churches. Yeah, so being in the church, it, church, yeah, it's, it's like a Venn diagram. And, yeah, and, and when you can find something like that, it's really, it's really cool. Now, tell me a little bit about how your full-time job and your it, your other full-time job, let's just call it what it is, your yeah. your vocation and your avocation, as we say. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, as, as a generalist, uh, as an HR generalist, it, it really helps me uh, in working with people. And in both of these uh, positions, while I serve as a minister of music or, you know, a elder in, in my church, a lot of it is about how I relate to people how we create processes and how we create um, plans of action, um, mm -hmm. even for the church, as well as for the company is they, they, they tie hand in hand. It's really about working with people, developing people uh, and being able to relate easily with people where they are to get them to where you want them to be. Yeah. Uh, as a music, as a music minister, it's very key uh, to be able to read the atmosphere of the church and of the congregants to be able to see where they are and do your best to open the pathway to their hearts for the word to easily, uh, easily infiltrate their hearts, right? So they so that word can do the work on the inside. But you have to be able to identify where where the need is. So as a music minister, that's one of the things I do, and that's one thing I do with uh, my my job at Brotherhood Mutual when I work with our hiring managers. Oh, perfect. Yeah, and you also have to know when to when to start, you know, the choir singing when the preacher's gone way too long. <laughs> Absolutely. You have to you have to definitely know when to cue the musicians to get them out of there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Get the hook. Uh, he's on fire, but get the hook. Get the hook. Uh, <laughs> So it's been three hours now. We got to go. The football game's on. <laughs> exactly. Forgive us, Lord. Anyway. Oh, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. So now a lot of people, what would you say to somebody who is, for example, you walk into, you're, you're up there in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is home of Sweetwater. Uh, mm -hmm. Now in Sweetwater, uh, for those of you not familiar with it, it's one of the largest distributors of music equipment uh, on, on, on in the nation, if not the world. Mm -hmm. And 
everyone who works there generally has some sort of musical experience. And I always say you can't walk into a guitar center or a music shop without running into a musician. They are people who, yeah, they sell music. Yeah, they sell CDs. Yeah, they sell guitars. Yeah. But they're also usually, they're, they're passionate about their subject. Yes. Tell me yeah. a little bit about how your passion for music and your passion for people, uh, how that sort of drives you to, to get you through having two jobs, which at the end of the day, a lot of people go, oh, that's too much for me. Yeah, so I... I, I was just recently on a uh, in a doing a conversation uh, on a, in a new app that has kind of blown up recently uh, for iPhone users, and um, it has been. I think you know which app I'm speaking. Yeah, of. yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did. Then the name just popped out of my head. Yeah, Clubhouse, Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Yes, Clubhouse. Yeah, yeah I've, um, I've I've seen tons of Clubhouse FOMO out there on LinkedIn. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But I was recently doing a conversation in there, and it was we were talking about um, how do you balance your mm -hmm. your nine to five with your five to nine mm -hmm. um and it's the idea of being able to really be invested in what you do you have to be passionate about it absolutely but i think for me it is really understanding that all of these things work together all of these things really come together and work to identify and find ways to create opportunity, right? For me, music, for me, is an opportunity for people to smile, for people to love, to people to feel, um, in, in my case, the presence of God, to really get that understanding. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, through my, although I have my nine to five, it's really, it's really about how do I get people to experience our company? How do I get people to experience a better life for themselves through employment? But then on the other side, how do I give people this opportunity to experience Christ through my music? So uh, for me, it's about yeah. creating a, a positive experience for people. Exactly. And, and bringing that passion out helps you engage. I mean, Absolutely. we've all seen people, I always say engagement is just shorthand for do you care? And yeah. if it's mixed company, I might actually drop some expletives into that. Uh, <laughs> I agree. Uh, but, um, you know, it's a matter of finding those people that so which is very useful in your line of work, you know, interviewing people for a living, mm -hmm. you want to these touchstones really help sell a candidate because when you have a commonality with your hiring manager, you go, Oh, you're in a band or, Oh, you, mm -hmm, you there, it becomes that sort of that yeah. connection. That, yeah. That it's, in, it's important to find people who care, right? It's yeah. important to find people who understand the work, understand yeah. what you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing and a way for them to grow and develop and to become a part of that team. That's moving this mission, moving this concept uh, from the company or from my, my outside job, uh, moving both of those things forward. Exactly. So finding the right partners to do uh, do the work with is is very key. Yeah, and, and passion shines through. I mean, that's Absolutely. ultimately what that's all about. Um, so you, you're doing this now. You also have a lot of volunteer ex work outside of of both of your vocation or your avocation. Uh, what do you? And I counsel a lot of people when I write resumes that they really need to have some Absolutely. volunteer experience, Please. Please especially do. young people. I mean. Absolutely. When you're in your 20s, you don't have a family, you don't, or it's a small family, get involved in your community. T tell me a little bit about what you see as a professional, uh, your volunteer experience, making those touchstones and showing Absolutely. up on your resume. Absolutely. Um, I want to say one thing first, when it comes to including um, that, that volunteer experience on uh, your resume, it's really, really, really important. Um, one of the things that I've heard in conversation, um, not at not necessarily at Brotherhood Mutual, but in in the industry in general, is that um, there's a the the idea that most people in the millennial generation or the Gen Z generation mm. um, they don't care, they don't have, uh, they only care about themselves. Yeah. Um, and that isn't necessarily true. Oh, but one I, way I disagree with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. one way to combat that yeah. is to show through your yeah. resume that you have these volunteer experiences that you actually do care about mm -hmm. what's going on and when you care about other things other than yourself. Yeah. Um, so, so for me, that's always been something that I, that I strive to make sure um, that people are able to see. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important. Um, someone has to do the work. Uh, yeah. For me, as I said, I'm driven a lot by my by my passion for for Christ and my passion for ministry, um, and I believe that someone has to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the earth realm. 
So why not let it be me? Why not let it be me as take an opportunity to serve someone else? Uh, because if I don't do it, who will? And I know there may be other people who, who will do it. However, but if I can get in and do it, why not? Yes. You know, so it, it's the who will and the why not. Um, yeah. So I, I believe both of those are extremely important. And I think you should find volunteer opportunities that you can be passionate about. Just don't take any volunteer opportunities. Oh, yeah. Take volunteer opportunities that you can do that you're excited about and that mm -hmm. you really want to engage in. Exactly. And if you don't know what you want to engage in, this is one of the things we tackle in the book. F try something. Just go yeah, out and absolutely. volunteer. Try it. I mean, there's absolutely. there's tons of NPOs out there looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. You may not like it, then move on. Find something exactly. else, but keep trying. It's just like a job. Keep trying until you find one that you like. You're going to find one eventually that you really, really enjoy. And once you yeah. find that one, stick it out and go with it. Yeah, exactly. Because that passion, again, that'll that'll jazz passion you up. So right. even if you have a job that, that sucks, uh, you're going to be able to take pride in what you do for work outside inside absolutely. you you take that with you absolutely absolutely excellent yes so you're technically i guess a recent graduate i mean six seven years i mean that that's that's mm -hmm. young enough to know what would you what would you suggest to anyone who is currently in undergrad and of course we know with the pandemic things are a little bit topsy-turvy right now in the mm -hmm. world but for those of for those students who are sitting in a classroom right now either on a computer screen in Blackboard or Canvas or actually in a classroom, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they're looking, they're staring down the long hallway of their future and it's a little dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know what lights are gonna be on down that hallway. What advice, what, what do you wish you had known, uh, you know, when you were an undergrad? Um, take as, do as many internships as you can. Yeah. Um, that's one part. Um, mm -hmm. But I also would, one thing that I still, I still mentor a lot of a lot of college students. Um, although I, I I used to work at the university, I don't yeah. work at the university any longer. Um, but I still still keep in touch with a lot of students. And one thing that I try to make sure that I instill in them is find a degree program and a um, a course of study that you're passionate about. Oh yeah, because you can take that passion mm -hmm. and put it in any industry. Yeah. If you're passionate about if you're passionate about what you do you can be the best in any industry. Um, yeah. Prime example, I have a friend of mine, uh, mm -hmm. one of my mentors or mentees who um, is a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, she's like, I don't know what industry I wanna go into. I don't know. I said, do you enjoy doing graphic design? I love it. I said, well, you can go into any industry. Yeah. You get to try it out now. You know, you have that portion of passion. You have that um, that that skill set that you're passionate about. Now you can take that and apply it to different industries and take what you're just what you're interested in. If you like sports, give it a go in sports. If you like um, fashion, give it a go in fashion. If you like uh, business and corporate settings, give it a, give it a go there. But mm -hmm. now you, I want I would, I don't want people to go to school for a job. Yeah. I would, if you're going to go to school, mm. go to school for a passion area yeah. and then relate that to a career. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're speaking my language. Yes. It focused not on employment, but employability, make yourself yes, useful. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. I know I, I made a, I made a 20 plus year career out of it and educational technology, having a theater degree. So mm -hmm. <laughs> because a computer science degree, when I went to school would have been pretty much useless today, but <laughs> My theater training, it sticks with me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's great. Yeah, because your internship was with the Detroit Tigers Association. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I did a, I did an internship yeah. with the Detroit Tigers in their marketing and promotions department. And now it's yeah. and that experience still powers a lot of what I'm able to do. Yeah. Um I, I went to school for sports management, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went back and got my master's degree. And now I'm I'm kind of operating four hats, you could say. My full time, my full time yeah. job, uh, Brotherhood Mutual. I also um, I'm the director of marketing and public relations for a sports agency, a Capture Sports Agency. Yeah. Uh, I do also the minister of music and elder at my church. So that's a full time job, mm -hmm. as well as I just started my own uh, company called Stay Royal Productions, doing mm -hmm. a live event recording and edits and video oh, wow. editing and all that fun stuff. So it's a great awesome. career, and but yeah. I've enjoyed all of those things. Take, I've taken my passion areas yeah. and turned them into employment opportunities.
that's fantastic. That that that's this is the way you're supposed to do it. I hate to say it. I don't I don't <laughs> want to sound like 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 an you know a scold here, but yeah, anyone listening, you know, the younger you are, the more the more possibility you have yeah, to do things like this. As you get older, not yeah. only do you not have the drive, but you have a lot less options. And yeah. it's fantastic. And I, I will, I will say, it. I as as I'm I'm young. I'm only 28 years old, so I'm still I still have a little bit of energy behind me. I still stay up to the wee hours of the night doing doing my passion projects. Uh, and as I get older, I'm sure I'll take my hands out of some things or create some create more structure around it and create more, maybe advisory boards or teams that are more helpful to be able to keep these projects going. But right now, while while you're young and while you're even even in uh, as, as you may be a seasoned uh, employed person, you, even however you are, take advantage of the opportunities that you have yeah. so that you can really learn and invest in yourself and what you want to do and what you want to become and then go forth and be and be great at that. Exactly. Your job is an investment. I always say that you, you, you have to get some return on investment. Absolutely. And yeah, you're, you're, you're again, you know, so let's let's now switch a little bit to, to HR. What do you think as an since you interview people for a living, mm -hmm. you're getting resumes every day. Mm -hmm. uh, what what do you wish people would would know about applying for a job in general, not just specifically with your company, but in general, you know, I know what I would say, but I, I'm curious to take your take on what do what sort of mistakes, what sort of misconceptions do people have about getting a job in 2021 and beyond? Um, I, I really, I really want to look at this from a candidate perspective, um, mm -hmm. because I know from from my seat, I can say, "Oh, you should dress this way, or you should be mindful of these things that you do in an interview." But from a candidate, I really want people who who are looking for employment opportunities to know that you're interviewing companies as well. Mm -hmm. yes. While you want to understand, while you want them to like you and you want them to be willing to employ you, you also should be asking those questions that help you feel comfortable about working at this place, working at yeah. this company. Uh, for me, a lot of it, um, a lot of the, the students that I mentor, they are concerned about DEI, uh, diversity, mm -hmm. equity, and inclusion. Oh, as and well so, they should be. <laughs> yeah, as, as they yeah. should be, right? Yeah. They want to make sure that these companies are, yeah. are conducive environments to yeah. who they are, uh, you know, some of their beliefs and, and strategies. So you don't want to align yourself uh, with a company that you can't walk in step with. So yeah. uh, you want to you get to know all the answers to your questions. Uh, but come prepared with questions to an interview. Don't don't just think that you know you're going to just walk into a room and and be able to just wow them over with who you are. If you're not coming with questions, if you're not coming with uh, insight or knowledge about the company, make sure you're doing your research. If you're not coming with some of these things, it, it makes it really difficult for for hiring managers to see you as a part of their team. Yeah, exactly. And, and you you want to you want to bring your your authentic self too. I mean, absolutely. you don't want to you want to be professional about it. You absolutely. don't want to just let it all hang out. But absolutely no. I I mean, I'll tell you yeah. the the prime example. I I will use myself in it as an example. Uh, my first interview uh, with Brotherhood Mutual, they asked me questions about you know what did I do and and everything like that. And for me. I went totally left. I didn't talk about my employment. I talked about what I enjoy doing. So I, I talked about a lot about um, Broadway. I talked a lot about um, the plays and productions that mm -hmm. I've been in and, and things that I've done. Not that it doesn't relate to the position. Mm -hmm. I was able to tie it all back around, but yeah. I, I wanted them to see me as a person yeah, and not just as a number or somebody coming to fill a seat. I wanted them to see me as someone who brings value, brings experiences, a vast range of experiences, because uh, you see me, I'm, I'm a young black male and trying to get jobs. There, there's a stigma in that. Uh, so I wanted them to see me differently than what they may assume that yeah. people are. Yeah. And, and I would hope that anyone watching this, listening to this is going to get that, you know, we're not just paying lip service here. This is about the future of the world of work. I mean, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion is not only the right thing to do. I mean, mm -hmm. that should be the main driver of it, but it's Absolutely. also good business sense. Absolutely. I mean, you don't, the reason we have silos in the world is, is because we hire people who are just like us. Absolutely. And, you know, the, 
<laughs> yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I'm sick of hearing from from guys like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you said it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll disagree with it. Yeah. Um, I think, I think yeah. we have to really create, um, as HR professionals, yeah. we're charged with, and, and as a workforce, uh, mm-hmm. we're going to be charged with creating these workplaces that look like the communities that we're in. Yes. Yeah. The we ones you serve to. and yeah. the ones that you serve, yeah. right? Yeah. Not just, not just the people that you know, yeah. but people, because there are oftentimes people that you know that can do the job, but there's somebody across town who you've never met who can mm. more than likely do the job better than what you've assumed, but you settled for yeah. comfort. You don't want to settle yeah. for comfort as a hiring manager, um, yeah. as an employer, Mm-hmm. You don't want to settle for comfort with um, someone just bringing someone in who who can who you know. As we say around here, get get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That absolutely, you know, that's absolutely. what you got to do. Yeah, and you have to be willing to have those hard conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, so having those hard conversations with uh, your HR team, having those hard conversations with uh, your hiring managers, and those things like that. Have those conversations and say, okay, where are we on this? How are we addressing this? What are we doing with this? Because these things are going to affect business in the long run. Yep. yep. And if you don't listen to the to the ones that you have inside your company. Uh, you're you're going to find yourself significantly behind and losing a lot of uh, potential business and revenue if you don't address these things now before they become major issues. You saw that with a lot of companies last year who just developed diversity, equity, and inclusion statements for their companies. Uh, You you run into a lot of lost business because you didn't take a stand or you did not have, you did not have a stand. You didn't have to take a stand. You just didn't have a plan in place. You didn't get involved. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't get involved. So um, you saw a lot of that happening. So it's really touch and go, but people have that. I think that is one area that people have to be willing to, uh, to press on a little bit and make sure that they're getting what they need out of their company. Yeah. And that's important for anyone in a marginalized community who's sitting there looking at their resume saying, am I good enough? Mm-hmm. You know, keep fighting until, until you get somebody to give you a seat at the table. Absolutely. I mean, you know, whether, whether that you are a female person of color, black mm-hmm. um, or, or poor, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, the working class, you know, is the most up, expensive you know. class. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, keep, it's expansive. Keep, oh yeah, keep it's fighting. Consistent. Yeah, absolutely. You have to keep yeah. fighting, and that yeah. would be my encouragement to anyone: is mm-hmm. as you are growing and developing your career, remember you are a brand. Your whole. Oh, yeah essence, your whether it's your resume, mm-hmm. how you present yourself, what you do, everything that you are is what you bring to the workplace. Yep. Be authentically you. Don't change who you are. Yeah. Be you. Take you into the workplace, but understand everything that you bring to the table and how that influences the work that you do every day and what value that adds to the company and really yeah. value yourself as a, as a candidate and as an employee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you'll bring value when you do that. That's Absolutely. fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So finally, let's let's kind of wrap this up, I guess. Uh, somebody who's just out there now, and they're they just graduated. Let's just say, let's we'll play with the calendar a little bit. They're just they just graduated. They just walked out. They they've returned their cap and gown. They're staring at their pl- diploma, which will be sent to the mail in four to six weeks. Uh, <laughs> and they're wondering, well, what do I do now? What advice would you give anyone who is currently in this crazy topsy-turvy job market who is a young professional who's who just either newly minted a degree or decided, because there's a lot of these people out there, let's face it, college is not, getting to a college degree, it's always, I've always said it's a pyramid. You know, you go, there are more people start college than, than finish. Mm-hmm. And, and that's by design. I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. And not having a degree is there's nothing to be ashamed of, you know, mm-hmm. that, that is, you know, in fact, you're the majority if you don't have a degree. <laughs> so, right. you know, what would you, what would you say to people like that who either have or don't have a degree and they're in their, they're in their twenties and they're trying to figure this out. What advice would you give them? Um, in this, in this pandemic time that we're in, I would say that it is important that you hone in on your Zoom skills, your interviewing skills now. Yeah. This is the time to take uh, advantage of, if you, if you graduated college, you more than likely have access to a career center of some sort. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you attended college, you have some access to a career center. And if not, find a mentor or find people in industry 
um, mm -hmm. that you either want to go in or in, and do mock interviews. Yeah. You want to take an opportunity to really hone in your interviewing skills, your stories, who you are, what do you want to do? Refine your searches. Refine your searches. You, yes, you want to do the shotgun approach and just shoot up and, and find any opportunity that you yeah. possibly can. Apply for all jobs possible, right? Yeah. But you really want to take that laser and, yeah. and begin to laser focus your yeah. intentions on where do I want to go? What, what's important to me? Mm -hmm. What is important to me in creating a career? Yeah. What are those things that are important to me in creating an opportunity that's going to be beneficial, not only for me, but my family and not only my immediate family, but future generations yeah. so I can create generational wealth, so I can create generational stability yeah. um, in my yeah. family so yeah. that uh, people will say, so my next generation doesn't have to work as hard. Um, you yeah. don't want them not to work as hard. You just don't want them to have to struggle yeah. as much, yes. Yes. <laughs> but you yeah. want them to work on it. So. Yeah. Exactly. I think that would be that would be it. Refine those interviewing skills, whether that be Zoom or in person or however um, the, the nation is when you're listening or watching this. Uh, just be sure to use this time wisely. Use that downtime wisely. Learn yourself, learn the industry and then refine your stories. Refine those things that will help you to stick out in any uh, interview uh, setting. Exactly. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Darius, I want to thank you for joining us today. This has been fantastic. I hope that this gets shared and that people, you know, of any age hear this and hear what's being said here, so. what you've said today and really take it to heart. I, I, get, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for showing up today. This has been fantastic. Uh, and everyone listening, uh, thank you for, for tuning in. We do appreciate your, your attention. Uh, if you liked what you've heard, please, by all means, uh, subscribe, share this, uh, get the message out there and, and connect with us on LinkedIn. You know, can I, you know I'm, I'm sure Darius would love to hear from you. I know I would love to hear from you. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, look us up on LinkedIn, you know, that, that sort of connection. We love to meet new people. Everyone stay safe, have a great week, and we will talk to you soon. Later.